All right, guys, we are interrupting our RV full-time practice run series that we're running because we've gotten a few emails from people asking if we would please do a video on how we winterize Maggie. Now, mind you, we are not professionals. We've done it, this will be our 14th time. Mm -hmm. And it's all been on Jayco's. So that's what we're gonna do because we still have a lot of videos left in the series. So we're just gonna break in because Old Man Winter will be here before we have all those videos out. So let's go. This is not meant to be an instructional video. We are not professionals. We are just RV owners attempting to winterize our own RV. We are not responsible for anyone attempting this winterization on their own. Get going with us. Now, when it comes to winterizing your RV, there's two ways to do it. One, you can use compressed air, blow all the lines out. Or two, you can use a non-toxic RV marine antifreeze and just fill the lines with that. Actually, there's three ways. You could do both. <laughs> we, since 2005, have always used just strict antifreeze and we've never had a problem. Uh, again, that's just us. We are not professionals. We're showing you how we do Maggie. And we've never had a problem. And we've never had a problem with it. So let's get started. Now, the first step is to find your low drain points, turn them all so they will drain. We had already done that. We let it drain overnight. We leveled and then tilted a little bit to the left and we are getting a little bit more water out. All right, now one of the first things we do before we winterize is we make sure our black and our gray tanks got drained and we did that at the last campground. You do not want any water in the system that can freeze. And what we're doing now is we made sure that the maciator, the hose was empty and we pulled all the valves, the black, the gray, and the mixer valve that bypasses the maciator. They're all open and you can see it's dripping into a five gallon bucket and we will just flush that down our toilet. In the house. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Otherwise we've defeated the purpose. <laughs> All right, now we have a whole house filter, which is located right here. That will need to come off too. And look, if you have one of these, I always have a problem remembering which way it goes. <laughs> so I put an L and a T, loosen and tighten. So when it's up, I just follow the L. And there, it's that simple. Chances are this might leak some water out. You'll take the filter out and put the housing back on and then when you dewinterize, you'll change the filter out. And tighten it. Have a filter on handy too for next year. Otherwise you're gonna dewinterize a bit. Down, I gotta run and get a filter. <laughs> all right, so the next step, I'm going to close all of the low drain points. They put this one on backwards at the factory. We will be showing you how to work with the Plex tubing and the fittings and we'll fix it. Yes, sir. All right, so that's all closed up. I'm gonna shut down the valves over here. And mind you, you're not gonna get all of it out, but when we winterize, you're gonna be getting some antifreeze into both tanks. So the whole thing is with water, when it freezes, it expands. Well, it's like a 45 and a 50 gallon tank in there. So there's not enough water in there where I'm worried it's gonna crack the tank. All right, so we are ready to start adding the antifreeze in. All Jayco requires is a siphoning tube and the valves over here, they even tell you which direction to put them in for it to siphon. The problem that we've had over the last 14 years now, one? Yes, with Jacobs? 14. Because our Greyhawk had the exact same setup, was we would get this screwed in, we would get it stuck into the jug, and it just would sit there. The water pump would just keep making all its noise, going on and on and on. And then eventually, sometimes, <laughs> it would start sucking it up. So that's a royal pain. We did find out online, somebody discovered that in here is a siphoning valve and it pushes in. It needs to be sucked in by the water pump in order to get the antifreeze into it. So. I'll try to take a picture of it later. Yeah. This is your strainer that normally sits like this in there. If you take it and flip it around and put it in, now it's forcing that, see there's actually water still on the line. It's forcing that valve to be open. So it will suck the water in a lot easier. And then just put your siphoning hose on. All right. Now for winterizing, this is what I love about Jayco. Sanitize or winterize lines. So I need to put it at, numbers are up here. I need to put it at two and I need to put it at four. Two and four. Now I'm gonna get a jug. So we'll do the outside faucet first. 
Then you'll come into the RV with me while I run all the faucets, while Chuck monitors all the jugs of antifreeze. Well, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime the pump because there's nothing in it. So, let's turn on the pump. See how it's sucking it right down? Wow, it's like immediate. What a big difference. Yeah, otherwise we, we used to be here five minutes going, why won't it suck it up? All right, we're gonna start with the outside shower. That's pink. Shut the cold off. Hot water. Turning white. Let me get the air out of the line. And it's pink. Cold water. That pink. Now the hot water. And we have pink. Let's go to the next one. Bathroom sink. Cold water. You want to put a little bit in the toilet to keep the seal lubricated. And the shower. Hot water. Those are all the faucets. We have an ice maker in this, so we haven't used it all season, but <laughs> to access it, we do that. And it's right here. This is the hose. Now we have it turned off, so all I'm gonna do is we should switch sides. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm gonna do is turn it on just to make sure that this it is pink up here too. Don't want to get Maggie all the pink. There it is. All right, so the line is empty. I'm just gonna screw this back on. That should be fine. The valve is shut off, and like I said, we haven't used it at all. There's another hose here. You can take this off, drain it, make sure there's nothing in it. That is what's sending the water into the refrigerator. Like I said, we haven't had ice in there all season. <laughs> it's a nice feature to have, but you don't always use it. The only other thing we'd do out here is would be if we had a conventional water heater, but we have the on-demand water heater, so we don't have to do anything because there is no tank to drain, and the lines that are coming in and going back out, they're full of antifreeze now because we ran the hot water. So as far as winterizing our hot water heater, done. Turned it off. <laughs> And if you do have a conventional water heater like this Atwood that we had in our Class C, the first thing we used to do was make sure the unit's turned off and the water is cooled. Then we'd pull up on the pressure release valve to release the pressure. After that, we would remove the drain plug to let the water drain out. 
Once it was drained, we'd close the pressure release valve and loosely reinstall the plug just so it couldn't get lost. Once the water heater is drained, it's time to find the water heater bypass, and that should be located on the back of the water heater. The purpose of the bypass is to keep the antifreeze from filling up inside the water heater tank because, well, that'd just be a waste of antifreeze. Now, during the camping season, the bypass valve is closed. The source water enters the tank through the cold water inlet, heats up inside the tank, and then exits through the hot water outlet valve. To bypass the water heater for winterization, simply just open the bypass valve and close the hot water and cold water valves, and the water heater is then winterized. This is our first time winterizing the washer and dryer. These are the instructions. And because it's such a tight squeeze inside of our cabinet, we're going to choose this option because you don't have to disconnect the hoses. With the machine power off, turn the wash temperature knob to hot. And mine is already on hot. The advanced cycle selector should be in position three. So we're going to turn it on. Press start. So you can see, we're starting to see some pink in the drum. Now we're doing the spin cycle. Hit on off. Now we turned it off. Now it's all winterized. All right, and the last step inside the RV is to fill the P-traps with antifreeze. Bathroom sink. I know, excessive, but I like to make sure. Yeah, and hopefully we're going to be full time in next year, so we're not going to need this stuff and we have extra. Maggie will never have to taste antifreeze again. All right, really, the last step, remove the siphoning tube and the screen that we uh, switched around so the siphoning valve would work. Turn it back around so the cone's pointed out. Trust me, do not leave it in there. <laughs> and put it right back in. Close it up. Shut the light off. That's gonna do it for Maggie's plumbing. <laughs> She's all winterized. Done. Done. All right, that's how Cheryl and I winterize an RV. We've been doing it since 2005. We're not saying that we do it the right way. We're not saying we do it the wrong way, but we haven't had a problem since 2005. Knock on wood, well, fake wood. <laughs> the main thing is you wanna get the water out of all of the lines. Any place where there's water in the RV, it can freeze. So protect just get your it lines. Yep. Protect your lines. That's what it basically comes down to. Yep. So other than that, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Yeah, feel free to share this video. And wow, we're doing this kind of backwards, huh? How about a thumbs up? Yeah, if you like this video, we'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, right down there, you click that, you can subscribe to the channel and the bell that just came up. If you circle that, it will let you know every time we put out a new video. Well, you can click on it. Well, you click on it and it turns the bell. There's no <laughs> correcting me now. Huh? Anyway, everyone, um, we will get back to the practice run series next Sunday. So until next week, when we'll be back on the road, according to the videos. <laughs> I'm Chuck. And I'm Cheryl. We'll get going with us. Bye. See ya.